is this? From Cher. Cher? Yeah. What happened to Wendell? She's happy today. Where's your Halloween costume? Oh, I didn't write it. I forgot it was Halloween. Welcome to the PLC lab where we are rearranged trainers every day, it seems like. But uh, yeah, I think we actually are finally getting the flow on this. Well, mainly we finally got this where we're back more on our main side with the new trainer. And then, yeah, of course that meant half the trainers had to go over here. So now all of a sudden I'm realizing, uh, yeah, I don't have any power. Which, yeah, instructors, uh, this is a pretty cool power strip I use on um, a lot of our tables. You know, uh, our tra you know, well, obviously our trainers are portable. You can tell by the size of them. But, you know, if somebody needs to learn, you know, in this case about kinetics, then, uh, you know, we'll grab this trainer, move it over to their station. Or, you know, these things are, it, it, by, between Monday and Friday, you never know what this class is going to look like. But somehow this table never ended up with power on it. Actually, this was going to be the smart cell until Framing Tech told me, you know, if you're going to do this, do this right, make it look industrial. So I guess that's why I never put power on this one. It's another tip. Really, we can, um, we can build 90% of what we need with what's in this box. I can imagine some of you already would. You ain't got a bigger toolbox. Yeah, I mean, I got bigger toolboxes. But the thing is, we can grab this at any time. And yeah, it has most of what we need. This is bin number five. If you return bin number five with a part missing, you will get the wrath of Mary Bruce. Very similar, yes, we have heavy drills. But this nice lightweight one, if you're using it all day, works a whole lot better. Well, two of those latches that I used yesterday, I'm gonna put the other one here on the smart cell. And one thing I notice, it's not really that positive that it latches in. And it doesn't say to do this in the instructions, but if you get one of these, take it to the bottom here. Let's just bend that over a little bit. That'll make it positive. That way they have to press it to release it. And now, instead of being a little floppy, as soon as it gets up into that latch, pops out. And now, it won't fall. Put out a video, it's been a while ago, it wasn't really popular, about the importance of measuring for one hole. And this is a really good example is, now I need to add this ethernet port down here also. And so if I just randomly drilled this, then I would really have a hard time getting it all lined up. So even if you're doing one hole, make sure that you're actually doing a measurement that you're gonna remember. We always use a two inch grid on ours. So I know the center of this is two inches both ways. So I just need to make a mark four and two. Really Rockwell, RBF. Do you know how many chuckles I'm gonna get in a training week over that? Working on the air compressor power, and of course we got to do everything twice. Why wouldn't we? Uh, I mounted this outlet here and made it nice and concealed, but it's coming down and it's smashing that cord. Of course, as a bonus screw up, I uh, nicked the ground wire relocating it. Well, it looks pretty good now, and I was trying to test it out. And Michael said I had to wire up this side. That's why we send him to school. All right, the little lights are twinkling. Pop the little blow-off thingamajigger. Oh, no. It doesn't work. Um, you don't have a ground hooked up to the outlet on the other side. What are you talking about? Right here in the terminal. Oh. You should have another ground hooked up to the top. Now, we sent him to school, but he hasn't watched a lot of my videos because all of you viewers know the green terminal blocks are bonded to the den rail, and that's how it gets its ground. And of course, I forgot, you got to reset the GFCI when they're new. Now we got a green light. Now we just, oh gosh. Oh, apparently I didn't get that back in good. Won't you laugh, you jump too. Which by the way, if you need a quiet compressor, uh, these California compressors are just about as quiet as you can get. What are you for Halloween? This is my relay from yesterday. Y'all watched me burn the LED up. Um, my labeling probably wasn't the wisest. I can't wait to see the cracks on that. But also, what type of battery only has a 90 day warranty? I'm gonna take a brand new set of trusty alligator leads and I'm gonna hook one to the normally closed contact. 
number one to the norm or not the normally the common is still and i think everybody i agree with everybody i really need to melt the coal but let's just see if this does good enough now touch one to the plus one to the minus oh well that was unexciting what did i do wrong holy moly <laughs> All right, so the wire, you don't realize that the wires are hotter, hot as can be now. Apparently, they're acting as a fusible link. And, yeah. Phoenix contact, I gotta give it to you. You got a good relay. I wanna melt this thing, though. This guy, should we hold it a little longer, or do we need to go get bigger wire? Might need bigger wire. So, another failure in burning the relay up. I did make a set of fake alligator leads, so they're definitely bush tail. Well, we're still biting the brakes. Made it through eight, but I see here, I can see somebody stepping on that, breaking the ethernet cable off. All those things that look obvious after you get a machine put together. So in the end, we made about halfway through the switches this week. We got one week left and yeah, I think we're doing all right. Hope y'all have a great weekend.